What if I told you that MSP or floor price or minimum regulated price would be the last nail in the coffin of India? By sharing with you an interesting historical story. So our story goes back to 1917. In 1917, while the when the world was dealing with the World War One, and entire Europe was engulfed in the war, US saw tremendous amount of economic growth, especially the food industry. And that growth was actually powered by the demand which was created by the World War One. So essentially in 1917, Representative Asbury F. Lever came with Lever Act. It gave some special powers to the President of the United States, who in turn would have more control over regulating prices, demand and supply of two important commodities, which were food and fuel. And so that the industry could produce this stuff in surplus and supply it to their light powers. So, so that was the idea behind Lever Act. Now, as the war intensified in 1918, the requirements or demand went exponentially high. Citing this as a great opportunity, US Food Administration, and by the way, under Lever Act, there were two important organizations which were created, U.S. Food Administration, which still exists, and U.S. Fuel Administration. And obviously, each of these organizations were created for their respective areas, which is food and fuel. So coming back to the story, Grain Administration, which was part of Food Administration, saw a tremendous amount of opportunity because of the elevated demand in Europe. And they went ahead and signed a contract to supply 200 million bushels of wheat to Allied powers. Now, as soon as the contract was inked, the U.S. food industry was mobilized to support this contract. Obviously, they required a huge amount of investment, so the farmers went ahead, took loans, and so on and so forth, because all of them wanted to grow wheat because there was a guaranteed income through it. Anyhow, the U.S. farmers were neck deep in growing wheat, and in 1919, the war ended. Now, as soon as the war ended, the demand for wheat died out, which meant that the contracts which were inked a year back for 200 million bushels of wheat are no longer valid, which means that the farmers were left high and dry. To deal with it, the government had to take a decision. So the government decided to acquire this surplus of wheat for a guaranteed price. There was a huge amount of op opposition, but yet the 63rd Congress went ahead and approved the bill into an act and the wheat Price Guarantee Act came into effect in 1919. Now remember, this act was a temporary resolution for the excess supply. So it was supposed to end in June 1920. And while this was basically made clear to the farmers, but as you know, large country, large economy, free money, many times it just goes beyond control. Anyhow, under this act, which is the Wheat Price Guarantee Act, a billion US dollars were appropriated and a guaranteed price of $2.26 was fixed for every bushel of wheat. And government started procuring it and the farmers saw this as an opportunity to make free, easy money and they thought that wheat was the best way to make money. And they continued to grow, to grow wheat as, as much as they could. But unfortunately, on 1st of June 1920, the act ended and the farmers were again left high and dry. Several thousands of farmers went into tremendous amount of debt. The entire food industry went into a downward spiral. Farmers in US faced the crisis of Great Depression 10 to 15 years before any other industry. Essentially, the prices of wheat fell down to almost 50 cents per bushel. And as the Great Depression approached, the prices fell down to almost 30 cents per bushel, which was like 30-40% less than the input cost on wheat. Anyhow, this condition went on to become worse and worse and worse for almost 10 years. Now, finally, in 1929, under the President Herbert Hoover, it was decided to try to solve this problem, which was created by a 10-year-old Wheat Price Guarantee Act. Essentially, they came up with a new act, which was called Agricultural Marketing Act of 1929. Now, this act will go on and establish a new institution, which would be called Federal Farm Board. Now, you would guess that this would be something better than Wheat Price Guarantee Act, but essentially, this was much worse than Wheat Price Guarantee Act. You see, Agricultural Marketing Act of 1929 went on to buy all the surplus in the market. Can you imagine? Across the farm categories, across the crop categories, they decided to acquire all the surplus which was available in the market. And on top of that, they also they also promised to provide easy money and funding and loans to the farmers so they could get out of the debt which they had. Now, 
This act went on to encourage the farmers to continue to do the mistake which they had been doing for last 10 years. You see, farmers saw this an opportunity to continue to grow a whole bunch of crop categories as much as they wanted because all the surplus will be acquired by the government and will be stored by the government. And I don't know what the government will do, but they would just go ahead and acquire it. So the genius farmers created newer ways of using fertilizers, cultivation, using technology at that time, and continued to reduce their input cost and continue to grow a whole bunch of stuff over and over and over again which meant that the supply in the market became so huge that the government was in no way to procure anymore. So essentially the downward spiral which had started in 1919s accelerated many folds and the farmers started reeling under the pressure even more than what they were 10 years back. So what happened was that an act which was formed to bring the industry out of this essentially accelerated the death of the industry. Finally, in 1933, as part of New Deal, a new act, which was called Agricultural Adjustment Act, which was formed. And under this act, a new institution was enacted and it was called Agricultural Adjustment Administration. You see, the fault in the previous law, which was Agricultural Marketing Act, was that there was no production limit. And that's why farmers were producing as much as they could. And since it was there and the farmers had produced so much, the government decided to somehow control this. But they could not just go and tell the farmers that, hey, you know, you are disallowed from growing because it's a democracy and we can do whatever they want. So what Agricultural Adjustment Act did empowered Agricultural Adjustment Administration to go ahead and purchase or acquire all the livestock which would be available for slaughter. And then it will pay the farmers to not grow anything. Now, funny as it may sound, government decided to start incentivizing farmers to leave their land barren. You know, that's what happens when you start doing stuff which is not going to be sustainable in the long term. So essentially, what government did, it basically started incentivizing farmers to leave their land barren and grow nothing. And, you know, the decision as to how much should be paid was made by Agricultural Adjustment Administration and so on and so forth. But you know what was the most tricky point of this bill? The recovery of the money which was to be paid for to the farmers was made in form of taxes by private industries. So the food industry was basically penalized because the farmers were growing huge number of huge amount of crops which had no demand in the market. This created a permanent friction between farmers and in the industry. And that friction still exists. You see, the tenant farming, when it became a norm in US, it created very stringent, you know, rules and regulations which govern the farmer and the industry relationships. And it could be seen even now, especially if you look into the farmers who are into livestock, you know, especially chicken, uh, beef and others, you know, they see a huge amount of pressure which is created because the industries, you know, put a huge amount of, uh, you know, a burden on them as to what kind of crop or what kind of produce they need to have. Anyhow, it permanently damaged the industry um, and, and, and it still has its repercussions. The moral of the story is very simple. Never try to regulate price especially the minimum support price. You see, price of any product or any produce should be governed by the demand in the market. Every time you artificially try to regulate the price, it, was already, it is always going to make it unsustainable for that price point to stand up and it will create undue price pressure on certain products because the supply will keep going up because the producer of the product always knows that he is going to make a guaranteed sum of money come what may. Essentially what I'm saying is that having a minimum support price or a floor price is a no-go in an open economy. So the important question comes out of this is what would happen if a country like India goes on to set up a minimum support price for a bunch of crops? So the answer is very simple. It will lead to the total collapse of agricultural economy in India. Indian farmers are very different from the farmers in US and other countries. 70 plus percent farmers in India grow the same crops over and over again, which means that if they grow rice, they continue to grow rice. If they grow wheat, they continue to grow wheat. They do not diversify much between seasons, especially the farmers in the northern part of India, they continue to grow the same crops over and over again. Now, fixing a minimum support price would mean that the government is going to incentivize for them to not diversify, which means that the supply of some of those crops is just going to shoot through the wire. And not only that, it's going to deteriorate the fertility of the soil, it's going to create undue price pressure on consumers to buy at certain amount, certain price and so on and so forth. And finally, what it will do is it will also create a disadvantage for the farmers because competitively they are going to be on the back foot. Just imagine what will happen to say sugarcane industry. The farmers who are growing sugarcane would continue to grow sugarcane and as they go on this repetitive mode of growing sugarcane at a guaranteed price, the input cost is going to get stabilized, which means that their margins will continue to improve 
and since the supply is going to be so huge in the market the demand or the price demand or the price pressure is going to be very high so the industries or the companies which acquire sugar are not going to be interested in procuring from indian farmers most probably they will go ahead and procure from a country like brazil because brazil only needs to go ahead and price it 10% less than what is guaranteed in india and capture the entire market so essentially what i'm saying is guaranteeing a price point for certain crop categories is the worst which a government could do for the indian farmers who are in dire need of huge amount of transformation they are in dire need of regulatory transformation they are in dire need of technological transformation and most importantly they are needed to be educated to diversify as to what they grow so having said that how can the problem be solved the three laws which the government brought in and i'm being very honest here the three laws which the government brought in were actually step in the right direction but since they are repealed they are no more an option so without going into too much of detail i think there are three key things which the government can do to improve the lives of the farmers and transform the farm industry in india Now, step one would be to strategize subsidies. So India has a ton of subsidies. I have to say that the government is very generous. All the governments have been very generous because they subsidize farmers in different ways, whether it is whether it is in form of subsidizing electricity, irrigation, fertilizers, and so on and so forth. But that's where the problem is. The subsidies are so much fragmented that their collective impact is very little. I think what the government needs to do is to unify this fragmented approach to subsidies so that the farmers see a collective value in the subsidies which the government gives to them. This could be many ways for example there could be a board created for subsidies just like say agricultural adjustment act and it could help the farmers diversify and get incentivized in form of subsidies for the entire crop growth right or things like that i think it's very important to reduce fragmentation in subsidy Now, number two would be creation of micro industries. You see, the biggest challenge with Indian farmers is that their exposure to industry is very little. You see, I belong to a farming family. My grandparents and everybody used to be farmers and i have seen that the farmers in the villages in india they are simply focused on growing crops but not creating products out of them like for example wheat farmers will create wheat and then they will go into the market and and get price punched in selling wheat at nominal prices because they are not selling they are, they have to sell only wheat they are not thinking about creating bread out of it so i think what the government needs to do is needs to invest in creating these micro industries which could process these raw food materials into actual consumable products now this could be done very easily by creating small industries uh between a bunch of villages right so you can have a village cluster and have one industry in there maybe a flour mill maybe a rice mill maybe a maybe a bread making company or something so on and so forth i think micro industries are the way for transformation and that's how china got transformed as well so the government of india needs to think about doing that Lastly I think there is a dire need of completely enhancing demand and supply chain. You see producing a good is one thing but then taking that to the market where the demand is the other. India has a completely broken supply chain. I don't think so the government has to go and invest billions of dollars in building up a supply chain and own that supply chain. That's completely counterintuitive. It could be as simple as partnering with a company like Amazon which has a tremendous amount of experience in more than 90 countries in building supply chain and creating a public private partnership model to help build which in incentivizes the private partner the government and the farmers as well in my opinion these are the three important things which the government could really do which will help the farmers in a much more material way than guaranteeing msp which has been proven to fail every single time now lastly i think there is one important thing which i also think is important and that is building up a trust between the farmers and the private industries you see india had a socialist start So after independence India was always a little bit lopsided towards the idea of socialism and the farmers in India have been much more closer to socialism because most of the farm leaders have been socialist. I think it's important that the government of India brings the private industries closer to the farmers, create a much more cogenial environment so that the trust between private counterparties and farmers increases and as this trust increases the other problems will automatically go away. So in my opinion these are some of the things which the government can do which would help the farm industry really transform from the point where they are right now in conclusion i will only say that the farmers in india have been deliberately kept poor 
there has not been a lot of attention paid to their condition. No, it's not that they have not been uh, investing themselves into farming and growing crops and the agricultural output has incre increased many folds since the independence. But the problem is that that farming has never generated income for them. It has never built assets for them. And that has been because of lackadaisical approach to policy making. You know, every time a transformational policy comes in, the so-called farm leaders will come in and they would roll back that policy. And that has happened time and again, whether it was during Land Acquisition Act or the recent farm laws. So it's important that the government doesn't cave in and goes ahead and builds up some stupid policy around guaranteeing floor prices and MSPs, which is going to further break down the backbone of India's farm industry. So with that, uh, I would end this video, which is already long, but please do let me know in the comments what you think, because it's important that the farmers in India are able to earn and enjoy the benefits of capitalism too, because the world is an open economy, the world is an open market, and everybody is allowed to sell and buy whatever they want. You cannot force somebody to pay uh, a certain amount of money, it, they would simply just not buy. So until the next video, Please stay safe, please stay healthy, and enjoy the last few days of this year. Bye.